Frank Walter. Our nuptial hour draws in the pace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, me thinks how slow this old moon wins. She lingers my desires, like to a step in or doubt with Long withering out and young man ready to Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time, and then the moon, like to a silver ball you bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnity. <laughs> Go, Philistrate. Stood the Athenian youth of Berenice. Awake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. Hippolyta, I wound thee with my sword, and one thy love doing injuries. But I will wet thee in another key. Fight and win. Happy D. Theseus, our renowned Duke. Sit down! Thanks, good Aegeus. <laughs> What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, the Lysander. <laughs> my gracious Duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voices full of feigning love. With cunning, hast thou filched my daughter's heart and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And be it so she stand before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius, I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. <laughs> As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which will either be to this man to marry or to her death, according to the law immediately provided me in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maiden, to you your father should be as a god. Demetrius is, is a worthy gentleman. So replied Demetrius. In himself, he is. But in this kind, one to your father's voice, the other should be held a worthier. I would my father look with my eyes. Rather, your eyes with his judgment, I suppose. I do beseech your grace, pardon me, and I will empower him to hold, but I do beseech your grace, I may know the worst thing of all this. Either to die the death, or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, for ever, may I question your desires. You can endure the life of the nun, right, to be in shame, close or mute, to live a barren sister all your life. But earthly or happy is the rose still, and that which withering upon the virgin door grows, lives, and dies in single blessings. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, and I will never even have to be able to this joke, Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or to wed Demetrius as he would. Relent, sweet Hermia, and why say you that craze title of my certain right? You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia. Do you marry him? Smart, will I stand her? <laughs> True, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well devised as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortunes are in every way fairly right to God. Advantage as Demetrius is, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why then should not I prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll about to do his head, may love to Nadar's daughter Helena, and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes, and idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought that I spoke to him, but being overfull of self affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, <laughs> and come, Aegeus, you two should go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up. Which by no means may extenuate to death or to vow a single life. Come up also. What cheer, my love? <laughs> How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there be fate so fast? Do you like the one I pray that I can vow to the same that protects my hands? I mean, for all that I could ever read or hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth, but either it was different in years. <laughs> oh, cross. I can't trip. Too young to be too old. <laughs> or else it was miswrapped in blood. A sight of Why did he be too low? <laughs> or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, well, choose love by another's eyes. Or if there was sympathy in the choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it as momentary as a sound, as swift as a shadow, as short as any dream, as brief as the lightning in the calling night, which in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man had power to say, Behold, Jaws of darkness do swallow it up. So quick, where things come to confusion. 
If those true lovers have been in our cross, we stand as if even to destiny. So let us teach our trial patience. Or does it have to bring promises to the thoughts and drink and size, which isn't here, or fancy flowers? A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. Fair gentle Hermia, may I marry thee? And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then still forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, where I do meet thee once with Helena to do observance to a morning May, there will I say to thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, my cupid strong as bow, my best arrow with the golden head, my simplicity of Venus is done with the souls and prosperous love by the fire, which put in the carpet to the altar of inner sail sea. And now more than ever met it broke, and never more than ever will you spoke, and that same place has to point me tomorrow, truly will I meet with thee. Oh, you promise love. <laughs> <laughs> Pyramus. 
What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover who kills himself looks gallant for love. Huh. That will ask for some tears for sure before me of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms and I will condole in some measure. <laughs> Name the rest of the players. Okay. <clears throat> Francis flew to the bellows mender. Here, Peter Coins. You must take Thisbe on you. Uh, <clears throat> what is Thisbe? A wandering knight? No, she is the woman that Pyramus must love. Nay, babe, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. Oh, well, that's all well. You may, you may play it in a mask and you may speak as small as you wish. Oh, and I will hide my face too. Let me play this me too. And I will speak in a monstrous little voice. Oh, this me, this me. Oh, dear, Miss Dear, lover, dear, let this me, dear, lady, dear. No, 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 no. No, you must play here, Miss. The flute, you busy. Well, proceed. <clears throat> Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quinn. Ah. You. Here, Mrs. Father, myself, Thisbe's father, Snug the joiner, the lion's part, and here I hope is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you be given me, for I am slow of studying. Oh, you may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Oh, oh let me play the lion too! I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, Let him roar again. Let him roar again. <laughs> oh, and you would do it too terribly. Oh, you would frighten the duchess and the ladies, and they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us every mother's son. Good friends, I grant you that if we should frighten the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice, and I will roar you as gentle as any sucking dove. I would roar you as for any night to you. You can play no other part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a, a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most wonderful, gentlemanly-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play it in? Why, what you will. Well, I can discharge it in your straw-colored beard, your orange tawny beard, your purple and gray beard, or your French crown beard, your perfect yellow. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all, and then you shall play fair-faced. <clears throat> the masters, here are your parts, and I request you, entreat you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night, and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town, and there by moonlight shall we rehearse our play. For, if we rehearse in the town, we should be dogged with company and our intents known. Well, in the meantime, I will draw a bill of property such as this play warrants. I pray you, masters, fail me not. We will meet, and there we will rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, adieu. At the Duke's oak we meet. Enough! Hold or cut bowstring! No one else here. We do wonders everywhere, swifter than the moon's spear. <laughs> Ever so the fairy queen, to do her or to fall in the grave. The cowslips fall from pensioners' feet, in those gold coats slaps you see. Uh, those be rubies, fairy favors. In those freckles live their favors. Let us go and seek some dewdrops here and hang a pearl. And every cow's will see her. Farewell, thou love of spirit. Be gone. A queen and all her else come here not. Ah, the king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed, queen, come not within his sight. <laughs> For Oberon passing fell in wrath because she, as her attendant, had. A lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king, she had never so sweet a changeling. Now jealous Oberon would have a child, night of his dream to tricks for his wild. <laughs> but she can force the home of boy, crowns of flowers and makes them all her joy. Now they never need and grow no dream, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. Ill met by the moon. 
rude life, Brad Titania. What? Jealous, Oberon? <laughs> Very skippant to Amber Sword is bad company. <laughs> Terry Rash wanted, and not I, my lord. Then I must be thy lady. <laughs> but I know what thou hast in the shape of corn settled in when thou least spirit. And put a pipe of corn, for you love to Amber Sword. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India. But that forsooth thy Amazon mistress, thy buskined warrior love to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give him bad joy and prosperity. <laughs> How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Where's my credit with Apollo? Knowing I know thy love to didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night of Perigenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Aegleg, break his faith with Ariadne and Antiope? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since middle summer spring met we on hill in dale forest or mead to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls <laughs> thou hast disturbed our sport, no night is now with him or Carol blessed. The human mortals want their winter cheer. The moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, that washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And through this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts fall in the lap of the fresh crimson rose, and on old winter's thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery. Set the spring, the summer, the child and autumn, the angry winter change their wanted liveries, and the maid's world by their increase now knows not which is which. This progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. <laughs> Do you admit it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my instrument. Set your heart at rest. The fair land finds not to the child of me. His mother was a votaress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often she gossiped by my side. <laughs> but she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake I do rear up the boy. And for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our rounds and see our moonlight revels come with us. If not, shun me and I will spare thy haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Ugh, fairies away, we shall chide our right if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this go until I torment thee for this injury. <laughs> Gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest from once I sat upon a promontory to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not. Lying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all arms, with a certain aim he took, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow. Yet marks eye with the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower. Before, milk white, now purple with love's wounds, and maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, there my shoes be once. The juice of it upon sleeping islands late will make man and woman madly dote upon the next life creature that it sees. Fetch me the serpent be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim the lead. I'll put a girdle about the earth in forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Having once this juice, I'll watch the Tanya while she is asleep. Drop the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing then she waking looks upon, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. There, I take this jar from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb. I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I'm invisible. I will hear the cross. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is the Lysander in fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toldest me they were stolen unto this wood, and here I am woeled within this wood, because I cannot meet my fair Hermia. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, and yet you draw not iron, for my heart is as true as steel. 
Leave it your power to draw, and I shall no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not play a suit tell you I do not know I cannot love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? I am Nathaniel Demetrius. The more you beat me, I will fall on you. <laughs> you even as your spaniel spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give to me the more than I am to follow you. What worse or place can I beg to be in your love, and yet a place of high respect to me is to be used as a user dog. <laughs> Attack not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I'm sick when I look on you. And I'm sick when I look down on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and make yourself a to trust the ill to trust opportunity of the night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. <laughs> your virtue is my privilege. For it is not night when do I see your face, therefore I think I'm not in the night. Nor is all this world that world of company for you in my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world will down on me? <laughs> <laughs> I will run from thee and hide me in the bricks and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildness has entered the heart of you. Run me till the story shall be changed when cowardice pursues and valor flies. <laughs> if will not say thy questions, let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the woods. I, the temple, the town, the field, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius. Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot bite for love the way that men may do. We were made to be wooed and not to woo. <laughs> I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand that I love so well. <laughs> Fare thee well, Jim. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him. He shall seek thy love. Ah, hast thou the flower here? Welcome, Wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give me. I pray thee, give me. I pray thee, give me. Give me. <laughs> I know a bank where the wild time blows, where ox lives and the naughty violet grows. Quite over canopy with luscious woodbine, the sweet musk roses with egg on There sleeps the time and sometime of the night, mold in these flowers and dances and delight. With the juice of this, I'll streak her eye and make her full of painful fantasies. Take out some notes and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. And don't his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath. Affect it with some care that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me at the first half grove. You're not, my very lord, your servant shall do so. <laughs> 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 now, Roundel, and a very song, and singing out to sleep, <laughs> and to your offices, and let me rest. <laughs> I've been cheated by you, and I think you know what it is. Ba, ba, ba.
What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love and take. Love and language for his sake. In ounce of cap of bear, hard of war with bristled hair. In thy eye that shall appear, when thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake with some vile thing. Demetrius' eye, yet you must flout to my insufficiency. Good draw, you do me 
Robin, <laughs> sir, you do, in such disdainful manner, me to woo. But fare you well, perforce, I must confess, I thought you were a more true gentleness, uh, that a maiden of one man refused must by another be abused. <laughs> <laughs> And never again come lies in near, for as a serpent of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the summit brings, or as high heresies which men do leave, or hate the most of those they did deceive, so thou, my serpent, and my heresy, you hate them all, but the most of me. Now, all my powers, I trust your love and might to honor Helen, and to be her knight! <laughs> <laughs> Aye, Mary, you must, for you must understand Pyramus has just gone to see Northern Eternity to come again. 
<laughs> I wonder if Titania be awake. Then what it was the next came in her eye when she must dote upon an extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, my spirit? What might go now about this honey grove? My mistress of the monster is in love! <laughs> Near to a close and consecrated bower, while her dolphin sleeping hour, crew crash its rude mechanicals, met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus' nuptial day, when the shadows thick skin of the barren sword to appearance presented in their sport. We're sleeping at the rake, when I in hand is advantage to take, and I just mole fixed on his head, and when it comes, when they can spy, discover themselves. Mountain sweet sky, away oh, his fellows fly. So, at the stair, one over one falls. He murder cries and help from Athens calls. <sighs> their sense thus sweet, lost with their fears, thus strong, sweet senseless things to begin do them wrong. And I led them on the distracted fear, lest we could have restricted the tear. In that moment, so came to pass. Tanya, wait to spend love and pass! Ha ha! This falls out better than I can devise! But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That's what you should do. An Athenian woman by his side, for she must be eyed on the face. the same thing. This is the one with love and pass. Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so, like breath so bitter on your bitter foe? Now I decide that I should use thee worse, but thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. Thou hast slain in me, or shoes and blood, fun to the deep, and killed me too. The sun was not the truth, and it is he and me, but he stole away from the sleeping her. It cannot be, but thou hast killed him. So should a murderer look so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart by your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my eye, Sander? I'd rather give his heart to smart house. Oh, so, okay. Sure, I'll drive you past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? And for me, never another of my men. Oh, tell true, tell true one thing for my sake. There is a look upon him being awake. Who hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, great touch. Can thy word and adder do so much? And adder did it for doubler tongue and nine. Now, serpent never adder stuff. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I'm not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for all I can tell. I pray thee, though, to tell me that he is well. And if I could, what could I get shelf there for? A privilege. Never see me more. And thus I part from your hated presence, so see me no more, whether it's dead or no. There is no fall on her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, while I shall remain. So sorrow, so heaviness doth heavier grow. For death that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe. Which for some slight measure it will pay, if here for tender I make some sleep. What hast thou done? Thou hast forsaken quite, and like the love gifts of some true love sight. Of thine this prison must perforce into some true love turn, and not a false turn true. Then fade over rules, rather than holy to a million fail companions. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> About the woods, go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens looked down fires. All fancy six she is, and pale of cheer. The size of love, the cost is a fresh blood dear. By some illusion, Seek thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against you. Yes. I go, I go, look how I go. Stretcher an arrow off a treacherous bow. <laughs> <laughs> Flower of his purple dye. Hit Cupid's archery. Sink an apple of his eye. When his love he the spy, let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her forever.
These dolls are Hermia's. Will you give her over? We oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your mouth to her and me, both set in two scales will even weigh. And both as light as tails. I haven't done my one to her, I swore. Nor am I, I now you give her over. Demetrius loves her, he loves on you. <sighs> oh, hell no. God is new, perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe it show thy lips, those kissing tears. Tempting grow. <laughs> this pure cajun white high tore a snow fan with the eastern wind turned to a crow. Oh, and I'll hold this up thy hand, let me kiss this princess of your white the seal of Oh fight! Oh hell! <laughs> now you see you both are big to use me for your merriment. If you were civil and you courtesy, you would not do me that such injury. Can you not eat me as I know you do? But must you join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not abuse a gentle lady so to bow and swear and to praise my heart when I am sure you hate me with both your hearts. You are both rivals and love Hermia. Now both rivals to mock Helena, uh, a trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure tears in a poor man's eyes with your derision. Not a noble sort would so up in the virgin and extort a horse's patient just to make you sport. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so. If you love Hermia, this you know I know. And here, with all the will of all my heart, of Hermia's love, I yield to you my part, and yours and Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love and will do to my death. <laughs> Never did mockers waste more idle breath. <laughs> Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will have none. If e'er I loved her, all of that love is gone. My heart to her, but guess why sojourn? And now to Helen, is it home return there to remain? <laughs> Helen, it is not so. <laughs> Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest to thy pair thou by a dear. Look where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Shepherd, now that my eyes found Lysander, my ear, I think it brought me to thy cell. But why am I just don't leave me so? Why should we stay from love to press to go? What love to press my Lysander from my side? Lysander's love, like, no, no more love him. Why, fair Helena, who more guilt the night than all your fiery o's and eyes of light? Why seekest thou me? Could not this make me know the hate I believe really made me leave you so? You speak not as you think. Get out of me! Whoa! Ah! She is one of this confederacy! <laughs> now I perceive you have to join all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injury, Hermia! Well, a grateful maid! Have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul virgin? In all the counsel we have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours we have spent when we chid the hasty footed time for parting us, oh, is it all for God? The schooling, friendships, childhood, innocence, we, Hermia, like two artificial gods with our needles, have created both one flower, both on one sampler sitting on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key. As if our hands, sides, voices, and lives had become incorporate. And so we grow together, like two a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet a union in partition. Two lovely berries molded onto one stem, so with two seeming bodies, but one heart. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex as well as I would try before, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed by your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not sent Lysander as you scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And need your other love, Demetrius, who but till now did burn me with his sweat to call me goddess, nymph, divine, and rare? Precious? Celestial? <laughs> <laughs> Wherefore says he this to her he hates? And wherefore Lysander did thou your love so rich within his soul, but by your setting on, by your consent? What though I not be so thought embraced as you, so hung upon with love, so fortunate, but miserable most to love and love, that you should pay rather than despise? <laughs> I understand not what you mean by this. Oh, I do persever and counterfeit sad looks, make mouths about me when I turn my back, he just, he just up. This sport's well carried shall be chronicled. If you had any pity, grace, or manners, you would not do me that such argument. But fare you well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence will soon remedy. Stay gentle, Helena, I hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats 
have no more strength than her prayers. Helena, I love thee, but my life I do, and I swear by that which I will lose for thee, to prove false, who says I love thee not. I say I love you more than you do. If thou say so, draw and prove it too. Wait, come. Ah! Sometimes frame thy tongue, 
then true to me to yourself, but good or wrong. And sometimes rare that I like to do is when each other looked out with the dust. Over the brows, then out of fitting sleep. With lead legs and batty wings stuff. <laughs> then to crush this earth. That's why I say there's that. It's had this rich with property to take from this all air with his might. And make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. And that's the way. All this derision looks like a dream and this vision. Back to Athens shall the lovers win, but leave, whose date till death shall never end. Whilst I and his affair do the employ, out to my queen, and make her in the employ. Then I will return my release from monsters view, and all things shall be peace. Spirits of another sort. I, with the morning's love of Othmate's court, but notwithstanding, haste, make no delay. We may affect this business yet, ere day. Up and down, up and down. I'll lead them up and down. I am feeling and feared and field in town. God will let them up and down. <laughs> Where art thou, Prod Demetrius? Speak down now. You're a villain. Draw them ready. Where art thou? Oh, I will be with thee straight. Follow me then. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward, art thou fled? Speak in some bush where dost thou lie thy head. Thou coward, thou braggest to the stars, telling the bushes thou leaketh for wars. <laughs> and when I come, come or can't come, thou child, I whip thee with a rod, he is the fire, and draw a sword on thee. Yeah, where art thou? Follow my voice. I know man who is here. Ah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Such a tender ass of mice. 
my hair do but tickle me? I must scratch. <laughs> what? Wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reason for hearing music. <gasps> Let's have the tongs and the bones! <laughs> or sweet love, say what thou desirest to eat. Truly a peck of provender. I could much sure the joy of Oh, but methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay of no fun. <laughs> I have a venturous fairy who will seek this forest horde and fetch you new nuts. I'd rather have a handful or two of dried peas, but I pray you let none of your people serve me, for I have an exposition of sleep come about me. Oh, sleep thou then, and I shall wind thee in my arms. Fairy, be gone, be always away. <laughs> so doth the wood vine, the sweet honeysuckle gently into waist in the female ivy and rings the barking fingers of the elm. Oh, I love thee, how oh, I don't love thee. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. Now that I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eye. Just a thought. Remove this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian sway, so that he, awakening when the other do, they all to Athens that I can give her pair, and think no more of this nice accidents. But it's the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy. Be as thou wast want to be, see as thou wast want to see. I have thought of the Cupid's flower has such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you. Bid the huntsmen wake them with their horns. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> to show our symbol skill. That is the beginning of our end. Consider this. <laughs> we call that in this fight. We are not here as mining to contest you. Our intent is all for your delight. We are not here as you here mining to entreat you. <laughs> the actors are here by their show. You are to know all that you would like to know. <laughs>
charged so and be done while away at Dothra. <laughs> that was the mural down between the two neighbors. tremble here, one line rough and wildest rage doth roar. They know that I, one said the joiner, am. A lion's fell, nor else no lion's dam. And if into this place there's a lion come and strike into this place would be a very pity. Very gentle beast, of a good pleasure. Very gentle beast, I saw like Ah, this lion is a very fox for his valor. True, and the goose for his discretion. Not so, my lord, for his valor cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the his discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor. But who scares not the fox? As well, give it his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. It, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this lantern doth the hornet moon present. <laughs> have more horns on his head! <laughs> he is no crescent, and his horns are visible within the circumference. <laughs> <laughs> this lantern doth the hornet moon present. Myself, the man in the moon, do seem to be. <laughs> this is the silliest stuff I have ever heard. <laughs> the man's been put into the lantern. How else is it the man in the moon? Um, you can't come to the candle, for you see, it's a smell. <laughs> I am not wary of this moon, when he would change. It appears by his small light of discretion that he is in the way. But in all reason, no courtesy, we must save the time. Proceed, Moon. All that I have to say <laughs> is to tell you that this lantern is the moon. I'm the man in the moon. This thorn bush, my thorn bush. <laughs> and this dog is my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Take the fight. No, take the fight. 
use the blade. I hope she will not use a long one for such a pyramus. I hope she will be brief. She had slide him already with those sweet eyes. Good night unto you all. 
Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore men's. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.